Anger is a fundamental human emotion that we experience when the world around us doesn't meet our expectations. And there are plenty of quotes and musings about how terrible anger is and how useless it is. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. But there are plenty of ways that we can utilize anger. Anger motivates us. It forces us to change the world around us to meet our expectations. We just have to know how to utilize it. Anger is something that all magic players experience, and I'm no exception. If you want to win, and I assume that you do, it's natural to feel angry when you lose. Especially if you lost in a way that you perceive to be unfair or unjust. You drew too many lands, or you drew too few, or your opponent made a big mistake and won the game anyway. These are all frustrating, and there are hundreds of reasons to get angry when playing magic, but only one of those is useful. And that's if you use that anger to make yourself a better player. Anger in and of itself disrupts your decision making, it makes you worse at magic. And there are dozens of studies that corroborate this. A 2014 study using eye tracking found the participants who were angry much more often and much faster jumped to heuristics or pre-learned habits than their calmer counterparts. And in magic this translates to playing on autopilot. You're just going through the motions, you're doing the things you've been taught to do or learned to do over years of playing magic because you're still focused on the thing that made you angry from before. Similarly, a 2015 study found that anger reduced mathematical accuracy in poker players. And I can't tell you how many times I've been angry, made a big attack on a complicated board state only to realize that there was something that I didn't take into account that made that attack a bad idea. And if I'd just calmed down and taken a step back from it, I would have realized that. Anger and frustration floods your brain and your body with cortisol, a stress hormone that exemplifies all of the things that make you a bad magic player. Risk taking, using your gut instinct too much, and not thinking things through. A 2009 Dutch study measuring cortisol levels in decision making tests found that high cortisol levels were directly associated with poor performance in decision making games. And it's not difficult to translate this to magic. So how do you curb your anger? There are lots of classic anger management techniques that you can use. Count to 10, taking some deep breaths, or taking a brief break from the game. And some of these were talked about by Mark Nestico in his article a couple of years ago, Tilting in You. But there's more to it than just reducing your anger. If properly utilized, the passion you feel on making a mistake can be channeled into making you a better player. After the game is over, Try and think about what happened. Look at it from as many different angles as possible. A study from this year asked participants to remember something in their past that made them frustrated or angry, and then gave them different management techniques to see how that improved their decision making after remembering that. Participants that were asked to reappraise the situation exhibited the lowest levels of sadness and frustration after the fact. The same participants also had the most adaptive decision making processes in tests given to them. To apply this to magic, try shifting blame. Don't think, my opponent got so lucky, or my opponent was so dead if they didn't draw X. Try to think about what you could have done differently. And this seems intuitive and obvious, but you'd be surprised how rarely we do when we're angry. Think about, could I have sequenced my plays differently? Was I playing too aggressively in the early game? What could I have done to shift this game in my favor? And if you do that over time, you'll start to accrue individual percentage points of victory that really do add up. This reflection and introspective attitude lets you remove yourself from the situation and look at it a little bit more objectively. It lets you assess the details of what happened within the game without any of the emotional baggage that comes with it. And this is a difficult thing to do and it takes some getting used to, but it is worth it. Blaming your opponent will never make you a better magic player, but thinking about what you could have done differently will. Variance is part of magic. It's important to understand that while you should search for ways to improve yourself and think about things you could have done differently, sometimes you did just get unlucky. If you kept a two land hand or a three land hand and drew five lands off the top, you're not winning that game. And that's not your fault, you didn't do anything wrong. The important part is distinguishing between those two things. If you can learn when you can and improve on your mistakes, but also accept that sometimes you will lose regardless of how good you are, you'll be a much better magic player for it. That variance is a key part of the game. It lets new players have a chance against experienced players. Remember that even the most experienced pro players in the world have win percentages in the 60s. They lose almost half of the time. Now granted, that's against other top pro players, but even I have a chance against John Finkel or Owen Turtenwald some percentage of the time. And that's important. And lastly, it's just a game. 
I know if it's day two of a GP or top eight of a PTQ, you really want to win, and that makes sense. But you have to remember that you got there because it's supposed to be fun. You play Magic, and I play Magic because I enjoy it. And it's easy to lose sight of that sometimes when we're tilted. Yes, you got unlucky this time, but another time your opponent got unlucky. We don't think about those times. We as humans are flawed in the sense that we always censor our opponent's unluckiness and focus too much on our own. For every time that I mulligan to five or get flooded, the same thing happens to my opponent. I just don't remember that one as much because it's not as powerful a feeling. It's easy to fall into the trap of feeling like you win because you're good and you lose because you're unlucky. Elements of those are both true. Sometimes you win because you were better than your opponent, but sometimes you win because your opponent was better than you, but they got unlucky. That's part of the trade-off that we have to accept to play a game like Magic. So, the next time you feel angry or upset, don't let your anger disrupt your decision-making. Take a hold of it. Take a hold of that passion and use it.